So knowing my luck, as soon as I released my Cole Beasley Giants video, just a new acquisition, James Robinson, a new acquisition, yet another one for the New York Giants today. We see they're kind of active. And what I want to talk about with this move particularly is that they're showing me they're willing to take it there with Saquon Barkley. So I don't want to touch on stats. I don't want to touch on a lot of things with James Robinson. But I do want to say that knowing him, he's a good player, a pretty solid back. Doesn't have the long speed of a Saquon Barkley, but more of a downhill runner, a guy who you can really lean on in the run game. We saw that with the thousand yard season for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So now understanding how he got signed to the contract, a two year deal with the New England Patriots. And then he got released just after that at the mandatory mini camps. And we look at that and we say, OK, this was right when physicals were being conducted. So was he injured at that point in time? Did he heal from this injury? Is he still injured? What is really going on there? And I digged into that. And I looked into it and I couldn't find any hard evidence that James Robinson is currently injured. So understanding that for the New York Giants. And we know training camp is right, right around the corner coming up in the Saquon Barkley, a guy who's mulling, not attending. So. With this going on, we're looking at everything that can possibly happen and what is happening. So I want to talk about this team. And I think the biggest thing that we have all said up to this point is that he's a running back. We love Saquon Barkley. He's a great player. He does a lot of things for this team, for the community. But at the end of the day, he has a short shelf life. And when talking about this situation, I want to kind of take out the feelings and emotions that New York Giants fans and that everyone has for Saquon Barkley. Because if we're weighing that into the situation, we can't truly look at what's going on, why this is really going down the way that it is. So when I was looking at some of these other guys and some of the teams that we say are contenders and that are winning Super Bowls and that have shown running backs are not the driving force to Super Bowl championships. I want to talk about some of the top guys in the game and some of those teams. So starting off with Kansas City Chiefs, I look at Patrick Mahomes, I look at Andy Reid, I look at what they've built. And, and truly, let's throw that out the window and saying they don't have a defense because I look at Nick Bolton, I look at Justin Reed, I look at the guys they have there, Chris Jones, one of the best defensive tackles in the game. So they have a structure just around Kansas City. And when I talk about Patrick Mahomes and how he's been successful, because I think what we're saying is, with Daniel Jones, we're going to surround him with receivers. He does not need Saquon Barkley, or Saquon Barkley is not as valuable as Daniel Jones is for that team and for that scheme. I think that when we look at these guys, even Joe Burrows, even Josh Allens, the New York Giants are built differently than those teams. I think that's what a lot of people are not truly weighing into the situation. And when I say if you're not going to pay Saquon Barkley, then it must be a plan behind it. And that's surrounding with different receivers. You already got a top tier tight end and Darren Waller if he could stay healthy. But that's surrounded with even more elite guys because I look at Kansas City. They have a Hall of Fame solidified first ballot Hall of Famer in Travis Kelsey. I look at some of the other guys, Valdez Scantlin. They lost Juju, but they still got Kadarius, got Sky Moore. So I look at Cincinnati. Of course, we know T. Higgins, Jamar Chase. T. Higgins is a number one receiver. But contrary to what some people may see and what the stats may show, on a different team, he's getting those double coverages. He's getting all of the looks. The coverage is thrown his way. So that's something we got to address. He has that. He has arguably, in my opinion, the best number three receiver in the game in Tyler Boyd. And of course, they've thrown different tight ends in there, but they've had good receiving tight ends. So now we see that. Josh Allen. They just loaded up. They got they got uh, Dawson Knox still, but then they drafted Dalton Kincaid. So we know they got Gabe Davis, had the big-time playoff game against Kansas City, but after that hasn't really lived up to what they thought he would be after that season. But still, he's got an elite, bona fide number one receiver in Stephon Diggs. So these teams, I look at them, and we could go with Trevor Lawrence, has Travis Etienne, has Calvin Ridley coming back, has Christian Kirk Evan Ingram. We could look at all of these places, and I see different types of weaponry for those schemes and for those teams. But for the New York Giants, like I've said, and I'll say it again, the best weapon is that guy lining up behind or beside Daniel Jones. And when we look at this, I see James Robinson, like I said, a pretty solid piece, a guy who I think you still got Matt Breida, who can be the explosive back in that running back room. Alongside that, you got Eric Gray and you got Gary Brightwell. So we got to look at those three guys, adding in James Robinson to that. But still, when I say, if we're going to replicate this, and I think if he's healthy, 
they may can replicate that. Not in the passing game because James Robinson is not the receiver that a Saquon Barkley is, but he can run the football. And I think now what we're getting to is that Saquon Barkley, he's been on different podcasts, he's said some things, he's been on some, some Twitter comments, and he's basically said his side of the story, how he feels, and he's standing on that side of the fence. And I'm a guy, I side with him in that standpoint is he wants to get paid. But I understand the business side of this and kind of everything that's going on from the franchise's standpoint because interdivision. Your rival paid a running back who was at the top of his game. I mean, I don't think some people remember what Ezekiel Elliott truly was to that team. He had a rookie Dak Prescott going to the playoffs. That's how hard he was running the football, and that's how good he was at that point in time. So he was at the top of the ladder in the NFL at the running back position. And Jerry Jones, he played hardball, he did everything, and then they bit the bullet. They paid Ezekiel Elliott, and we saw what he's become. He's currently a free agent right now. So understanding that, and I think it being so close to home, seeing it, a guy who you've, you've went against, you've game planned two times per year against Ezekiel Elliott. If you've seen how we've shifted as a defensive coordinator, we've shifted from now game planning everything to wanting Dak Prescott to throw to now we're trying to get them in those situations. Let Zeke run the ball. He's going to get one to two yards. So now with Saquon Barkley, and I'm not saying he's going to fall off a cliff. I'm not saying that. But it's kind of in the era where we have a Le'Veon Bell apologizing. A guy who with the Pittsburgh Steelers was also at the top of the top at the running back position. And now he's apologizing, wishing he did not go to the New York Jets, wishing he did not sit out that season. And I really don't think Saquon Barkley will sit out this season. I want to throw that out there as well. But when I look at this, I've already said it's gotten ugly. And I think that is getting to a worse point. Because they're adding guys and they're looking at guys and they're showing you, okay, you said hypothetically what you could do and what you could say about your team and to the organization, to your teammates. We're showing you what you we, what we could say to you when we sign a James Robinson, when we look at these guys, when we draft different guys in an Eric Gray. So you feel one way, but we're showing you as an organization, we can't sit on that. We can't sit here and say, okay, he's playing hardball. We're going to sit here and tie, our, and tie ourselves into this guy who we know is not happy in his current situation. Like I said, we all talked about now getting to the point where the franchise deadline has passed. So they can't really work on a deal this year. He has to play on the tag or he doesn't play. And now when we get into that type of situation, we look at trades and hypothetical trades and what I want to talk about with Austin Eckler, another back who's in this kind of situation, he's a guy who's saying, okay, you don't value me. And I, and I have so many touchdowns. In the past couple of years, I have one of the top five touchdown percentages in the NFL. And I'm a running back. I catch the ball. I run the ball. Does it all for the Chargers. But you don't value me. You say I don't deserve the money and I shouldn't get paid. Why do you want so much in a trade from me? Why, why do you want picks here and here and here? Why do you want players thrown in here? If I'm such a replaceable player and I don't have value in this league, why should you want value back from me? And I think that's the kind of question that we now find ourselves in because if we're saying, and I, I've seen it, you know, even some people in the Giants fan base, and let me know down below in the comments what you think about this as a Giants fan or as a football fan in general with the running back position. People are not siding with Saquon Barkley. We're seeing it. You know, Kansas City Chiefs, Joe Burrow has went to the Super Bowl. The LA Rams had Cam Akers and some other guys, but we're still seeing that was the catalyst of Cooper Cup. So now, do we value Saquon Barkley enough to even ask for trade assets back for him? What is really a trade pack? What would that look like if we're saying he's not worth the money? Because also the team that's looking at it, not only would we have to not give you these assets if we're trying to get a guy who you don't value, we got to pay him as well. So if we have to get this guy, you want assets for him, and we have to pay him, now I, that that's where we find the hard position of trying to find a trade for Saquon Barkley. So I look at that. Like I said, a new acquisition in James Robinson, something I had to touch on, even though I just touched on the Cole Beasley situation. But what do we think about this? The New York Giants coming back and playing hardball just like Saquon's playing hardball because we know they offered him a deal. He wanted more. Bet on himself, and that's something we have to look at as well. Do the Giants feel slighted in a sense? Because he's feeling slighted. They're feeling slighted. Now we're in a situation where nobody's happy. 
And I think that's what's truly going on right now. I don't know how we can recon reconcile this relationship between those two. Like I said, it, it's really gotten to a point. Like I said, this is ha something I had to touch on because there are so many different takes about running backs. And now we get to youth football and these guys shouldn't even play running back in college. These guys shouldn't even play running back in Little League because you want to work on that receiver craft up and up and up. So, like, that's something that I'm looking at it, that I'm watching with the landscape of the NFL and with the landscape of how people are talking about Saquon Barkley. It's not getting any easier. This new running back throws a wrench in kind of all of that because if he's healthy, and like I said, no hard evidence to show me that he's not healthy, this is a very good running back. Who can get you? Let's say hypothetically, he gets you 700 to 800 yards. Matt Breida can get you 300 to 400. Then you got Brightwell. Then you got Eric Gray. Now you have what one Saquon Barkley could do for this team. That's what I talk about. If we don't have an elite running back, we're going to try to replicate it. We're going to try to duplicate it with a plethora of backs. They've taken that approach. What happens from this point forward?